Ever wondered how you can create picture-perfect reflections that weren't there when you actually took your photo? Well, in this Luminar Neo tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create realistic reflections with a simple editing trick. In the example we're going to work on, we'll finish up with an edit like this from a starting point of this. So without further ado, let's get into it. On the top row here, you can see a couple of examples that I've worked on in preparation for this tutorial. And on the right here, this is our raw file. And for those of you who support me via the Members Plus download option, you can find this photo file in our shared folder. The first thing we want to do is edit our photo as we would any normal photo. This photo file is actually 20 years old. It's 2005, taken on the Nikon D70, a very old camera. So the quality isn't great. So I'm just going to jump in, first of all, to Luminar's image quality tools, and I'm going to run the noiseless raw filter. I'm just going to put that on the middle option for now, see what that does. I feel like that's got overly smooth, so I'll just go to low. And one of the things I like about this is we can reduce noise, but we can also pop in a little bit of sharpness as well. And then we can check out before and after, before and after. I could also run a sharpening filter on this, but I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is actually develop this photo. You can do an auto adjust nowadays in Luminar Neo, which is great. However, I like to do this myself. So I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of extra contrast. I don't wanna lose detail in the information in the shadows around the opera house itself or the building. So I'm just bumping up the shadows and we want to make sure we're working with a fully expanded dynamic range. That means that our photo starts at a pure black point and also has a pure white point as well. And what we do is we press J on the keyboard so that we get clipping warnings. And you can see inside the little highlights on the bridge here, we're getting some red pixels. That just tells us we have a pure white point. And if I pull this bottom slider across here, we start to see these blue pixels. That means that those are pure black points. Basically what I'm looking for here is where I just start to see a couple of blue pixels and on the top end, just start to see a few white pixels as well. And then if we need to boost the shadows up a little more, like I feel we do, we can do that. Now you may also notice that back in the day, I wasn't very good at keeping my sensor clean. There's a whole heap of sensor spots, but Neo is so good at just cleaning those up for us. So we're just gonna come into the array section, remove dust spots, and they're taken care of for us. Man, I wish I had had that tool many years ago. Right, the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have a perfectly straight horizon line. You can see that as well, 20 years ago, the things that I take for granted now, like making sure that my horizon is perfectly straight in camera, I obviously wasn't as diligent back then. So let's sort that out. There's a couple of ways that we can do it. We can either come into the crop section here, we can try to get Luminar Neo to correct it for us by clicking this button here, but I find the AI that drives that algorithm isn't particularly good. The better way to do it is to grab the handle on the outside, so just click your mouse, hold it down, and then you can rotate it. And using the guide that you see in front of you, just make sure that the horizon line, denoted by where the water meets the cityscape, just make sure that is nice and horizontal, which it is. And when you're happy with that, you can just click apply. The other thing I'd like to do is just add a bit more structure and interest to the actual uh, buildings themselves. So I'm gonna grab the amount slider and you can see that as I crank that up, the photo as a whole starts to get pretty gnarly looking before and after, it's too much. But in terms of the buildings, they get a little bit more interest. So I'm just gonna use the AI masking to see if I can't select the, um, the opera house and the bridge nice and easily. So I'm gonna click architecture and you might think at first glance, well, that's a pretty nasty mask. And it is, it's not done a great job. However, I always use these as a bit of leverage to get me where I want to go. So I'm gonna combine that mask with the brush, come into paint mode, and I'm just gonna do a pass across the rest of the architecture like that. So before and after, before and after, you know, that's good enough for our purposes. Got there very quickly. And the next thing I'd like to do is just darken down the sky a little bit and just add a bit more contrast. And so I'm just gonna work with the image as a whole, and then when I'm happy with it, I'm gonna come in with my linear gradient, which allows me to drag down from the top and just feather that effect in towards the horizon, something like that. And now if I press the backslash key, I can see the before and after, or alternatively, you can press the eye icon down here in the bottom right, or you can do the slider and just take that across and see where you came from and where you've got to. And if we're happy with that overall edit, now we can focus on creating our reflection. The first part of creating the reflection is pretty simple. What we want to do is duplicate the layer that we've been working on. We want to flip it up the other way, and then we want to just reveal it 
only where the water is. So let me show you how we do that. To duplicate the layer, come over to the left hand side where you see the layers section here. And we're going to right click on this little thumbnail and choose duplicate layer. On a Mac, you just press option click on it. So now we have an identical copy sat on top of the original. So what we're gonna do is reduce the opacity of this layer to about 50%. So we're gonna see half and half of both layers, but obviously it looks the same because both layers are the same. But now what we want to do is click this button here, which says flip this vertically. And now what we want to do is bring that down until the horizon line of the new layer aligns with the horizon line of the existing layer. And that's why we changed the opacity to about 50% so that we can clearly see how that aligns. And as you can see, there's a problem at the moment because the two horizons don't actually match up. They are not aligned. And so we can actually rotate this new version and make sure it's nicely aligned with the layer above. And if you're not sure, just use the scroll wheel on your mouse so you can zoom in nice and close and get nice and accurate with that. And now we just want to reveal this reflected layer only in the water component of the photo. So what I'm going to do is come into the masking section and choose a linear gradient. That's going to allow me to click very close to the horizon line and then drag up. And now when I come out of the mask, we're gonna see just that reflected component. So we can now come to the property section, grab the opacity slider and bump that up. And there you go, we have a mirror image which is starting to emulate a reflection but we've still got a bit of work to do. In order to have a successful result when we're creating effects that mimic reality, we need to actually understand what that reality is. So let's have a quick look at some examples of how water reflections behave so that we can better emulate what's going on there. Now here are some examples I prepared earlier. So the first thing we need to understand is obviously not all water is gonna reflect the environment and the rougher the water, the less likely that is gonna happen. If we take a look at this waterfall here, you can clearly see that the highlights reflect very obviously in the water, whereas the darker foliage, it's hard to actually see that reflected. So highlights reflecting more clearly is another thing we need to bear in mind. Now, as I open this and zoom in, this is something I really want to bring your attention to. So you'll notice that these brighter reflections here are actually running vertically. So although we have movement in the water that operates on a sort of left to right basis, the actual reflection is going top to bottom. And that's really important for us to remember. Another thing that's worth noticing is, although we have quite reflective water, the closer we get to the shore here, we can't see any reflection whatsoever. What's going on is some of the water's more turbulent around the shoreline there, and that's why the reflection is being broken up and we actually see that quite a lot in bodies of water. And as we look at this photo of Mount Cook in New Zealand, I really love this one. If we come in close to the shoreline, you can see that there's not too much disturbance in the reflection. It's pretty clear to see what's being reflected. And again, you see that top to bottom almost smearing of the reflection. But as we come further away from that horizon line, we can see that there's more refraction going on and the reflection is getting broken up more as it moves further away from that horizon line. So again, that's something for us to bear in mind to see if we can replicate that behavior. So let's jump back to the edit we're working on, come into the edit section and see if we can't finesse this reflection. The first issue we have is a uniform brightness across the whole photo. The brightness of the reflection is identical to the brightness in the sky in the foreground. Now, because the sky is the source of illumination, the reflection should by nature be darker than that. So what we're gonna do is come into the develop section so we can drop down the brightness. And we're gonna do that with a drop in exposure. And you can see that currently I have the wrong layer selected. So let's undo that, throw that develop tool away and make sure that we have the correct layer selected. So that is the top layer, that is our reflection. Come on, Anthony. And we're gonna to go to develop, grab the exposure and I'm gonna drop that down I don't know, somewhere around negative one and a half exposure. That looks good to me, but what I want to do to finesse this even further is not make it quite so dark towards the center of the frame. Our viewer's eye is always drawn to the brighter part of an image, so let's help guide them up to the more interesting part where the opera house is. And we can do that with a linear gradient again and say, give us full effect underneath where I just clicked, and then let's just fade that darkening of the exposure in towards the horizon line. Let's go with that. Now, as we jump out of the mask mode, we can see before and after. Okay, we've got a nice darkening of the water and that looks much more natural. The next issue we have is that our reflection 
is an identical, perfect, pristine reflection of what's above it. So let's change that. And we're gonna change it with the blur tool. So there's several ways we can approach this. The first thing I'd like to do is use the Gaussian blur with a small amount, just to rough this up a bit and lose some of that perfection. So before and after. I'm gonna close that blur tool down so that I can apply a different blur. I can't apply a different blur in the same instance of the tool. It would just override that initial Gaussian blur that we did. This time what I want to do is add a motion blur. I'm gonna grab the amount slider and push it to 100. And as you can see, we're moving left to right. It looks like we're on a speedboat or something whizzing along through the water. That's not what we want. What we want to do is grab the angle and change that from zero up to 90. So now we have that vertical top to bottom blurring effect that we saw in those other examples before and after. But as you'll recall, the closer we are to the horizon line, the less that blur is in effect. And so what I'm gonna do is just drop the amount down just so we have, I don't know, around half of the effect, something like that before and after. And I'm gonna close that blur tool down. Now I'm gonna add another one so that we can amplify the effect, but we're only gonna do it further away from the horizon line. So we'll open the blur, come to motion, amount to 100, angle to 90, and now what I'm going to do is grab a mask, let's grab a linear mask again and just feather this effect in from where I clicked around here and that's just gonna ease it in. So let's hop out of that and now you can see before and after, we've just stretched those reflections out even further. Now sometimes what I like to do is rather than have a perfect 90 degree reflection, sometimes what I do is just break that slightly and you can see that if I change the angle of that, the perfection of it is just broken ever so slightly. And so what you can do with that second layer of the blur effect, set that effect somewhere just below 90 and that break in perfection just almost helps with the believability. The next effect I'll show you that we can add to the water isn't so much a construct of reality, but more about how we perceive water. When you think of water, it's often blue or turquoise. Um, and that's not a quality of water. If you look at water in a glass, it's transparent. That blueness comes from the reflection from the sky. So in this instance, we're not really gonna see any of that blue, but you can play around with this effect and just see if it works for your photo. So I'll close the blur tool down and to add some blue, there are several different ways we could do that, but the easiest way would be to come into the develop tool, come down to the color option and just take the color temperature towards the blue. You can see if I push that all the way, there you go, that's blue. But we can just add a hint of blue, or we could just tint it with a little bit of green as well. Entirely up to you to get the effect you're after. And I feel like our water is still a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna use that opportunity just to darken it down again. Here's our before and our after. Now you may be wondering why I've chosen to do that with the develop tool rather than using Luminarneo's fantastic Water Enhancer AI. But the problem with the Water Enhancer AI with the way that we're working at the moment is we're talking to a photo layer which is currently upside down, it's been blurred, and the AI that's inside the Water Enhancer has not been designed to recognize layers in that way. So if I grab the amount slider and push that up, it's just not gonna do anything because it doesn't recognize where that water is. So in this instance, it's no use to us at all. Okay, we are not done yet and don't go anywhere because the next step is vitally important because if you start trying to process your photo as it is, it's not going to work. But before we move on to that, I just wanted to say, if you want to learn photo editing and you're just a beginner or you're further along in your journey, doesn't matter. Currently, I have my course available to you, Beginner to Advanced Editing in Luminar Neo at half price for a limited time only. Please excuse the plug, but a man's got to eat, right? But if you're interested in that, currently 50% off with the code and the link in the description below. I'd love to have you along for 18 hours of content. Honestly, I'm going to hold your hand right from the start all the way to doing very complex editing so you can wow your friends and become a photo editing hero. Right. Let's get on to that final step that you must follow if you wanna be able to complete your edit. So let's say we're happy with our reflection and now we want to add some finishing touches. Well, as the photo stands, we can't. Why not? Because our edits that we apply are only going to apply on a layer by layer basis. What do I mean? Well, let me just quickly show you. If I grab the exposure and I say, I wanna brighten everything up, 
I can't brighten everything up. I can only brighten the layer that I have selected. And that goes for any tool that we apply. We can only apply it to the layer that's selected. So what we need to do is actually merge these layers down. And thankfully now inside Luminar Neo, we're able to do that. So what we do is whichever layer is selected, you hold down the shift key and you're gonna select or click on the other one. Now both are selected and we can right click and choose merge layers. Now we have a flattened layer that whatever we want to add, whatever tool is gonna to apply to the whole thing. So now if I grab the exposure and bump that up, you can see it affects the whole photo. Perfect. So let's add some finishing touches. What I would like to do is just add a little bit of atmosphere around the horizon line. It's just gonna add a little bit of, well, atmosphere, and it's also going to help to hide the transition line between the addition of the reflection and what was really there before. So here's our before and our after at the moment. Let's see if we can't finesse this. Let's add a little bit more depth to that. Oh no, actually let's keep it pretty tight around the harbor itself before and after. And now I'm just gonna grab a mask just to paint this effect in with a brush strength around 50, halfway. Look, let's paint along the horizon line. Okay, there's just a little subtle pop of that. Let's see, before and after. Okay, I like that. And we'll just ease the amount back down. I'd like to draw people's attention more to the center of the frame. Best way to do that is with a vignette. So I'm just gonna darken down the edges straight away. Look at that, we're being drawn into the middle of the photo. And I do like to add a bit more feathering to my vignettes. And in this case, I'm not normally a fan of brightening up the center of the vignette, but the fact that we can do that is really useful on occasion. And on this occasion, I think that's a useful thing to do. So here's our before and our after, before and after, nice. This mirror-like water kind of indicates that we've got a long exposure going on. So if there was a long exposure making the water go a bit blurry like this, surely the sky would have a bit of movement too. Well, let's use that same blur technique to see if we can't emulate a bit of movement in the sky. I'm gonna to come to the motion section again, crank the amount to 100. Okay, we've got clouds moving left to right. But what I like to do if I'm making some motion in the clouds, is actually change the angle, as you've seen us do before, to actually match the direction that the cloud is flowing. So you can see as I twist this to around 10 degrees and look at the before and after, we get a bit of motion matching the direction of the cloud. And now what I can do is come with my brush and just paint that effect in. So here's our before and our after. Now we've kind of simulated a long exposure in the sky as well. Let's add my favorite tool, Mystical. Just pop a little bit of that in there just to give it a nice, soft, subtle glow. Nice. And I'll finish things off just with a lookup table. Let's come into the cinematic toning and just do a little mouse over to see which one of these I think looks quite nice. I think this purpley effect that San Diego is giving us, it's over the top, it's unrealistic, but I really don't mind. Look, if we push that to 100, you can see the exact colors that get injected into this. So with the default at 30, we're just taking what was under there before and just enhancing it with that color grade. And I think a little bit of that goes a long way. Okay, it's time for my favorite part. Let's look at our before and after, here we go. Here is our original photo taken back in January 2005 on my trusty old Nikon D70. And there we have a 2025 edit with Luminar Neo. Here's our before and here's our reflection version. And that my friends is how to add mirror-like reflections in Luminar Neo. If you like the look of Luminar and you don't have it yet, I do have a 10% discount code with the link in the description below. If you have problems with your photo editing in Luminar Neo and would like me to create a video to help you, please write the question in the comments below. While I do have to prioritize requests from my members and supporters, even if you're just someone who's watching the channel, enjoying the content that I create, I may be able to make a video for you all the same. If you'd like to help support me by becoming a channel member, I've got a link in the description below. It's like the price of less than a coffee every month. And for those of you who choose the members plus downloads option, don't forget you have access to this photo and many others from previous uh, video tutorials as well. Thanks so much for watching. You might wanna go and check that video out right there. The YouTube algorithm thinks you might like it, so why not? I'll see you over in that one. Bye-bye for now. This is getting awkward. My kids have just come home from school, so I've got to go and see them. So you click that, and I'll see you in that video, and I'll go and see them. Bye for now.